The Grand Prix of France has always been an important stepping stone on the way to a world title. Twelve different times, drivers have won and gone on to a world championship. Sami Celio did so in 2007, while Alex Corella did the same ten years later. However, the story of the afternoon is with three-time world champion Philippe Shep, who hopes for a French victory on home waters and who has nothing but heartache in the past. Can this be his lucky day? All of France hopes so. The story is about to be written and is coming at you next. From the shores of Europe's largest alpine lake on the edge of spectacular French Alps in the exquisite spa area, city of Evian, it's round number three of the 2019 UIM Formula One World Championship for Power Boating at the 23rd Grand Prix of France. Hi, everybody. I'm your host, Stephen Michael, along with my partner of 19 years, multi-time world champion, Jonathan Jones. And we greet you today near the Swiss border on lovely Lac Le Mans, what should be a most memorable afternoon of powerboat racing. Now, the lovely city of Avignon is elegantly perched on the border between France and Switzerland and the northeast uh, side of Geneva on the East French Alps. This area, known for its renowned healing waters, has lured health-conscious visitors from around the world since 1824. This is France's most celebrated spa resort. Jonathan, there are so many things to see here, including famous water and musical gardens, trips to the thermal spas, or as I've seen you before, try your luck at the largest theme casino in Europe. Yeah, I'm not hurt me financially, trust me. Yeah, it's, you've said it all, Steve. It's down to the beautiful spa that they have here, the outstanding golf course, the casino itself, um, outstanding local cuisine, and of course, just behind this, the best skiing in Europe, if not in the world, so it's got a lot to offer. Evian recently won the award for the best resort in France during the World Travel Awards celebration. It is a must-see area, and as all we say every time here, feel more culture, feel more water, feel more relaxation, feel more fun, feel Evian France. Well, stately Lama, I'll tell you what, the lake here is a huge challenge year after year for these drivers on this 2.1 kilometer, 1.3 mile race circuit with a myriad of dramas and unknowns. Jonathan, how do you tame this circuit that seems almost too tough to conquer every time we come here? Well, if it's down to difficulty, it's a 10 out of 10. And as you can see there, you come down past the start finish line into that difficult area with 100 meters, 460 meters down into the tight right hander, Torrente almost losing it there yesterday. Down to five around the 120. This is on the Geneva side. Very, very rough there as they then hurtle their way down past the finish line. Conditions currently looking fantastic. Now, Marit Stromoy was once again a huge factor in qualifying, missing pole by two tenths of a second. Is she satisfied with her strategy so far? I fight it so much I ran out of fuel in the end. Uh, I had uh, I couldn't start another lap because I didn't have any more fuel. Anyway, I'm uh, happy b b uh, being second. It was hard, uh, and uh, but in the end we chose the wrong, uh, right propeller and uh, had a good balance down here the straight, and uh, I'm, I'm happy. Of course, pole is better, but uh, anyway. <laughs> Well, she's excited about today, and why not? Three-time world champion Philippe Shep has dreamed of being France's first race winner on home waters. And this dates back to 2007 in La Rochelle when he first raced in a Formula One race in France. He's on pole for the second time here. Is this finally going to be his lucky day? I have a good setup at the beginning. I'm very sad when my steering is broken. But uh, I have a lot of motivation at the end, and I'm very happy. It's good for my team because... A lot of, a lot of work. Nice, nice. Thanks. Congratulations, Philip. <laughs> Thanks. Nice. See the top three there. Now, once again, Evian proves to be a must-see event of the summer with the World of Powerboat Racing with both celebrities and past world champions coming by to enjoy the weekend. Let's take a look at the starting field of drivers today. Philippe Shep, as we mentioned, second pole here in France as Marie Stromoy came close. Jonas Anderson has a podium already after a third in France. World champion Sean Torrente will be starting in the fourth spot, looking for his fourth straight podium. Sami Celio had all sorts of problems, but managed a sixth in qualifying. Alex Corella disappointed in his new boat. He's starting in the eighth spot. Eric Stark, last year's winner, starting in the tenth spot. And the rookie uh, Fabio Camparato down in that twelfth position. Also, Greg Foster, another rookie in the 14th spot. Philip Roms has been on the podium twice here. He'll start 16th. And then finally, Ahmed al Hamli and Francesco Catando will start in the back of the field because they had engine changes. 
So, Jonathan, as we get closer and closer to this race, the conditions here are fantastic compared to what we've seen in years past. We were really nervous about the way the day started. We had four thunderstorms that went through during the evening, but when we got up, it started to get better. It got calmer. The clouds went away, and uh, it only got better and better. Yeah, I mean, yesterday we had a call off uh, qualifying because it was so difficult, so it's put a lot of a lot of stress on all the teams and the drivers to be able to do qualifying this morning and the race this afternoon and of course this morning in qualifying instead of the usual format that we ran we did a full one hour program every lap to count and I think it just made things so exciting out there it showed that a lot of the other drivers that don't get into that top six had the chance to do it this time and I'll be, if it was down to me I would be running that sort of program going forward because it makes great television and of course everybody doesn't know what going to happen right to the end of the hour well as we look out we can see the panoramic view in front of the start pontoon tens of thousands of people who show every year here throughout the hillsides they come over from uh, switzerland they take the boats across lac le mans to enjoy formula one power boat racing this is the second and final round of our european tour for 2019 we started seven weeks ago in portimao in portugal now this is the six different location that we've raced in france in the last 36 years and Vichy, we've been there twice, Lyon three times, Paris once, Shalom 11 times, and La Rochelle. So I'll tell you what, the qualifying story yesterday was unbelievable with weather conditions on Saturday forcing the drivers to battle as they went around, as John mentioned, a one-hour qualifying session that was very, very dramatic. Now, Sami Selly, the two-time world champion looking for his second victory, had a major hurdle. He ended up qualifying in a sixth spot. Team Abu Dhabi swept all three positions on the podium a year ago. Could only muster a fifth from Thaniel Quimsey, while defending world champion Sean Torrenti again will be forced to fight for a podium in that fourth spot. Now, Swedish driver Jonas Andersson had a personal best in France. He'll start third today, three-tenths of a second off the pace, while Marit Strumoy came with an eyelash of earning her second career pole, 0.23 of a second slower than the man of the hour, Philippe Shep, as the three-time world champion overcame serious steering problems, coming back and scoring his seventh career pole, his first since Abu Dhabi, in 2017 and Philippe Shep is really excited he felt the pressure the last few years Jonathan he has failed to score a point in France here in Evian yeah and it was great to see him back at the sharp end and uh, did a fantastic job out there in qualifying this morning I thought for a while that uh, Peter Moran was maybe going to be taking over the mantle as the lead driver there but uh, it certainly showed this morning that Philippe Chiap he really did get it all together everything ran smoothly for him he put in a blinding lap and uh, great to see the French driver on pole position here today well as mentioned Jonas Anderson of Sweden had his best qualifying day in France this morning missing pole by just over three tenths of a second and will start third his strategy. Let's find out from the wily Swedish veteran. I changed people on the boat uh, when it was home, and uh, this is the first time we, we go full speed in the, in uh, on the course. So it was need to change a little more, but uh, it's coming better and better. Probably waited too long on the pontoon, but uh, I mean the risk also in this uh, Evian water is quite big. Yeah, it was a good qualifying for for the condition. Great history here, Jonathan and Francis. We talked about they've raced in Paris. They raced in chalon sur saint in the middle of France uh, for 11 years. And by the way, you won a couple, 91 and 94, which was very nice. It's so much fun because the history of this powerboat racing sport the heart of it is really very close to France. Oh, it certainly is. I mean, French, uh, powerboat racing has been a big thing in France for many, many years. And, you know, when I used to compete, we used to have a number of events here. And uh, one of the great events was the Paris Six Hour Race, which, again, I was fortunate to win the last time it ran in 86, a long time ago. But we had 92 starters for that event down the Seine. It was, it was some spectacle. So great passion in this country for this sport. Well, I tell you what, the most points in Evian history. Now, this is our fifth race in a year, in a, in a row here this year, and Sean Torrente has picked up 45 points. Torrente, the world champion who's starting fourth today, is coming off a streak of three points.
podiums in a row, all thirds in the last three years, but he's done it in dramatic style, starting seventh, camp, coming up to third, another year starting way in the back at 16th, coming up into third, today starting in fourth, uh, what do you think, can he make it four in a row? Well, if anybody can, it is Torrente because uh, he's got a very strong team behind him. And the experience within that team is, is quite outstanding. And uh, I, I honestly think that he's going to be pushing right from the start. He knows he's a little bit on the back foot at the moment, but uh, he's going to have to push. But I was talking to Marit Stromoy just before the race. She's in that second position at the moment. And she said, I'll tell you what, I am not going to give an inch. I reckon I'm focused. I th I've got to have that good start. And she knows if she can get into that turn, say, first or second, she has a good chance of winning this Grand Prix. Eight different nationalities have tasted victory here in France, and the Italians have won 11 races here with Guido Capellini, of course, the uh, team manager for uh, Team Abu Dhabi. He's got the most at five. Renato Molinari, the legend Hall of Famer, also has multiple ones. He's won three different times. Alex Corella has won a couple of times. And then Fabrizio Boca, the 92 world champion, who we saw yesterday walking around the paddock, has picked up a victory. It's been 21 years since an American has won the Grand Prix of France, Scott Gilman, 1997. And he's here today. Yeah, he is. And it's quite nice to see that a lot of these uh, past drivers have now become team managers. I mean, you've got Scott Gilman that is now running the victory team. And, of course, uh, Guido Capellini, the Italian, now running the Abu Dhabi team. And, uh, you know, they have a wealth of experience, not just themselves, but with the the mechanics and uh, the back back you know the backyard guys that work so hard there tirelessly um, and between them they have hundreds of years of experience and that does count in formula one powerboat racing you know it's the small things that make that difference and these guys know exactly what it takes to get to the front and to win championships the man on the pole the man from france philippe shep three-time world champion we've been kidding with him for the last few years here in Evian. He truly has a monkey on his back he needs to get removed today. His first race here in 2015, he had the pole, broke down 17 laps into the race. Next year, he started second, was fighting in a, for that uh, number one spot, broke 22 laps into the race. 2017, he started third. He was gone on the 17th lap. And last year, he was up, uh, running up in the second spot. Lap five, he broke a prop. He went in, lost three laps, came back, finished 15th. Philippe Shep, the uh, veteran for the CTIC China Shenzhen team, has never earned a point here in Evian. No, and I think if uh, luck is with him this weekend, he showed today that he can run a blinding lap out there. He's very comfortable. He's been very comfortable in that particular boat for a few seasons now. He knows the limit of the boats. They've done a lot of testing in France. Uh, Philippe Desertan, the, the team owner that uh, runs out of uh, La Rochelle there in France, they've now found a permanent test circuit. So for the last three or four weeks, they've been testing everything that they can to make sure that they are in really good shape not only for this race but for the rest of the season and uh, at the moment they seem to have done their homework well and they're looking strong well as you look down at the grid from uh, the left of your screen to the right of course number seven you see the boat that's philippe shep the man on the pole his teammate by the way and good friend uh, peter Moraes, is starting down in the seventh spot and uh, peter's looked uh, strong in the past but uh, i think he's a bit disappointed being down in that seventh position while his teammate is up in that number one spot. Yeah, I think we expected a little bit more from Peter because uh, he has been sort of the main runner in that uh, team uh, for some time now because uh, Chiap, unfortunately, has had a few technical problems. But uh, he'll be there or thereabouts, I'm pretty sure about that, Steve, and we have the one-minute board up. Well, as we get the one-minute board being displayed, we begin to anticipate the start of this 40-lap odyssey in eager anticipation to this epic event here in France. For each driver, now is the time every person on the start line thinks that what has come before has faded into nothing. The only thing left to do is drive, Jonathan. It's time to go racing here on Lac Le Mans in France. And we are just moments away as the 30-second board comes up. All eyes focused on the lights across the way. Just seconds before the start. We wait for the three rows of lights to come up on the board. And the 30-second board continues to be displayed. The drivers will accelerate across the course and work past a green demarcation buoy. And as they jettison themselves across, 
Yeah, about 600 meters. First row of lights, second row of lights. The lights are off, and they're away, and they explode away from the dock. And Philippe Chef grabs an immediate lead side by side. Now Marie Stromoy being hounded by Jonas Anderson, and Anderson moves up into second spot. And Sean Torrente out on the outside tries to hold his position as he is being forced by his teammate Daniel Quimze and Sami Celio right there with him. So as they slide through turns number five and six, they come down the front straight away. Right away, we start counting laps. Blade Chef. Five boat length lead on Jonas Anderson. Torrente now hounding, trying to move himself up. A good battle for third, starting to develop here on this very first lap. But it was Philippe Chef Jonathan getting away cleanly at the start. And did he have a start, Steve? My goodness, he came off the line. He pulled 30, 40 meters on everybody else. Jonas Anderson still hanging on there in second. But Chef at the moment looking like he's got everything under control there. And you can see one of the Abu Dhabi boats in third. That's Torrente. He has moved up one slot and he's overtaken uh, Marek Stromoy, as have Pani al the other Abu Dhabi driver. Too bad for the woman out of Norway as we watch uh, the driver number eight. That's Peter Moran from France trying to slide himself up. Now remember the last race, Jonathan, what happened in Portugal. Marek Stromoy started third. She finished fifth. She's dropped back early here. What a shame for the driver from uh, uh, Norway as we get a chance now to watch Pina Moran. The rest of the field comes sliding through here as we've completed the first of our 40-lap odyssey here on Lac Le Mans this afternoon, round number three of this championship. Yeah, Maris Romoy unfortunately losing a bit of ground. She got squeezed by one of the Abu Dhabi drivers. But there we see first and second, Philippe Chap running that boat beautifully on top of the water. You can see some of the other guys floating the boat all over the place. He is rock solid and Jonas Anderson having done a lot of work prior to coming here on the design of that hull because he builds and designs them now in, uh, himself in Sweden doing a great job there in second position. 2.65 seconds behind the lead boat. There you see Duarte Benevente, the driver out of Portugal as he is trying to move himself up. He's sitting in the 11th position. So Benevente, who started 11th is in 11th. There's your leader, Philippe Shep. He's been there before. He has led this race before here in Evian in years past. He would just love to get past lap number 23, much less uh, 40. As you see, the rookie pulling off the race course. First on Alberto Camparato. What a shame for the Formula 2 world champion. He is out very, very quickly after having a stellar race in Portugal where he started uh, 19th and finished 8th. Yeah, and that's a shame, Steve, because he needs seat time. He's new to Formula 1. He excelled in Formula 2, and it's all about getting the feel of the boat. And because these boats are always being shipped from race to race, he doesn't get enough time in the boat to be able to get the maximum out of it as we pick up Torrente again there now, hanging on in third. Now, there's a difference between fourth and fifth position. As you get a chance to see uh, Marit Stromoy, who is down in that fifth spot, as she uh, tries to hold off the charge of Peter Moran, who's now fighting his way up. He's trying to figure out a way to get past Sami Celio. And uh, Celio now is uh, ahead in that sixth spot. So it's very, very tight. The top five are separated by just 12 and a half seconds. Yeah, and you can see now Celio, all of a sudden he's starting to put the hammer down. He had a reasonably good start. Stromo lost a few bit of ground. Celio in sixth, Stromo in fifth, and they are certainly got a battle on their hands. As you see Stromo there on the outside, Celio on the inside, but he doesn't seem to be able to do much at the moment with Fami al Kwamzi just going around the right hander there in the number two Abu Dhabi boat. Interesting later as we watch uh, the battle going on right now for fifth. 6th and 7th position. Philippe Shep, who took off on pole position in clear water, got the whole shot. He did a 51-2-9. How fast is that? No one's been close. A 52-6 is what Jonas Anderson did. Sean Torrente's best is a 53-6, so he's a second behind Jonas Anderson. That just shows you how fast Philippe Shep left the starting gate. Yeah, oh, like a bullet, Steve. I mean, he went down that straight. He must have had 30 or 40 meters on every other boat, which is very, very unusual. So he knows he knows the setup, as you say. He did so well here in the past before breaking down. So fingers crossed, luck should be on his side this weekend because with the performance so far, he deserves to win this race. As we go on seventh place, uh, battleist uh, Peter Moran, he's sitting there. You get a chance to look at him drive in that beautiful uh, French boat as he works his way down this race course through the right-hander. It's been very tricky through turn number four. He's trying to figure out a way to move up on Sami Celio, the two-time world champion, 
10 as you take a look at last year's winner. That's the Swedish driver, Eric Stark. And Stark is struggling. He started 10th. He qualified 10th. He's sitting in 10th. No progress for the man who was a, a big, big winner here a year ago. Steve, they had a big problem in qualifying this morning. I went to talk to them afterwards. And one of the hydraulic hoses that controls certain parts of the engine um, as he went round. Let's just see what happened there, Steve. It's a Oh, Torrente. Boy, no, that was Donny El Quimsy oh, as he launched off away. Donny El Quimsy almost went airborne, almost took off that boat and the DAC boat. He kept on the water. He was really teetering on the edge of oblivion there. He certainly was, and that's given Stromoy a chance. Look, she's definitely closing up on him. Maybe Thani's having one or two handling problems down at the far end. I mentioned on the Geneva side of the circuit, that is where just here where it, you get these freak waves that come in from time to time and they catch you out. The big issue here is that every lap the conditions are changing so you can't sort of take a moment's rest. You've got to concentrate all the time as we see Thani there skimming on top of the water. Maris Stormoy definitely closing that gap. So the 40-year-old out of Abu Dhabi, Thani Quimsey, who's in his 18th season of racing. As you take a look at Eric Stard, and how about Francesco Catando? Catando started all the way last, Jonathan. He was down in the 19th spot. He has gained nine positions. He has moved up into the 10th position. He's on the fly. Obviously, they solved the problem that they had earlier in the morning. Yeah, what they had was one of the piston rings actually broke on the engine and they had to change an engine which put him to the back and when he was trying to qualify this morning he, he couldn't work out why he'd lost so much power after the qualifying session they took one of the cylinder heads off and they found that one of the pistons had malfunctioned in some way they had to change the engine he had to go to the back of the field and obviously that's deterred him but boy he's got a strong pace out there at the moment yeah, Steve looking very very strong now Albert Comparado who's up for rookie of the year honors is already gone last year's rookie of the year Eric Eden just went by us very, very slowly. The engine didn't sound uh, in top form, and he is uh, slowly making his way out of the race. What a shame for the likable driver from Sweden. Eric Eden has pulled off the race circuit. Pretty close there between uh, uh, Stromoy and uh, uh, Sunny Selio just behind her there, and then you get a few other boats putting pressure on, and we've got Eric Eden. I just saw him coming off the circuit. That is a shame for the second team Amarati boat. As we take a look at Eric Stark, now he's slid up a spot. He's up into the ninth position. Alex Corella started. You see him in the blue boat going by. He qualified eighth. He is still sitting in eighth. Now Eric Stark has jumped up a position as he has slid up with Gatando now in that tenth spot. Bartak Marzouak in the eleventh position. And then the rookie, Greg Foster out of California, down in that twelfth spot. Yeah, uh, Stark is baffling me a little bit, you know. Do they still have that problem with the power steering? Because I see certainly saw in the last lap or two watching him that that boat seemed to be getting a little bit flighty on the water as you can see there Steve does he still have the problem he had in qualifying this morning, Cantando is closing down on him fast and if he doesn't watch it within a couple of laps Cantando is going to take him all right, as we watch now, Stark trying to figure out his way through the maze of drivers out in front of him as they fanned out. Eight laps in a record, Brooks 40, scheduled this afternoon here around this 2.1 kilometer, 1.3 mile race circuit here on Lac Lama or Lake Geneva here in lovely Central Europe. And as we watch Eric Stark as he goes flying down the race course now a year ago, Jonathan, as he makes his way around the rookie uh, Berger Robert, one of four French drivers in this race. Now, Eric Stark, as we see now, another uh, victory team boat pulling off. Could that be Ahmed Al Hamli? We'll have it to is, wait and see. Yeah, it is, Steve. He's definitely pulled off the circuit. He had an engine problem this morning. They had to change the engine, apparently. It had some, some, something wrong with it that they couldn't find. And it uh, looks like he's got a technical problem again, as we see there. Jonas Anderson still doing well in that second position. Sean Torrente at the moment in that number one boat, the Abu Dhabi sponsored boat, doesn't seem to be able to make a much ground up. All right, as we take a look at Sean Torrente, he's up in that third place battle. Let's go back, Jonathan, and watch the restart. You'll get a chance here to see how the pole sitter, uh, Philippe Shep, rocketed off to the start as they get away. Now, they put up the, uh, they came through a commitment buoy, so they have to circle around. But look at Shep setting himself up. 
And moving up quickly and challenging, you get a chance to uh, see Jonas Anderson. And Sean Torrente took full advantage of uh, Marit Stromoy Looney losing her second place position. She's dropped more positions than anybody else, but Duarte Benevente minus three in this race. Yeah, what happened was when she got, she didn't have the best of starts, and coming into the turn boy, Jonas was just ahead of her. She had to switch to the outside lane. The boat sort of settled a little bit too much in the corner, and that gave uh, uh, Sean Torrente the opportunity to nip on the outside of her, take that position from her, and now he's sitting in that third slot with Barney Alcams but there is a great battle going on midfield, Steve. I saw Peter Moran, Carella, Stark and Cantando nip and tuck between those drivers. There's nothing to choose. So we could see some changes in position there in the midfield. Well, keep an eye on that battle yeah. as we go back through. And we can take a look here of Alex Carella still in that eighth spot, being hounded by Eric Stark behind him. And then there's Francesco Cantando. So you're looking at eighth, ninth and tenth position. Cantando flying that boat. Oh, my. He was teetering on the edge there, Jonathan. He was able to save it, but boy, does he fly. That blaze boat high in the ground. And right behind him, two spots, is uh, Greg Foster, who started 14th in the American Rookies up to 12th. Yeah, as we go on board there now with Carella, this is a DAC boat. He's driven DACs for many, many years, and he was telling me that he switched to the victory boat and he just didn't feel comfortable with it. So he's gone back now to the DAC, and he said, it is going to take me a little bit of time, but he said, I'm a lot happier with what I've got underneath me at the moment. And he said, given time, I reckon I'm going to be in a strong position so that I can fight for wins yet again. Ahmed Alhamli slowly going past us at the broadcast location, heading back. To get uh, taken out of the uh, race here, and what a shame for the Wiley veteran, the driver from Abu Dhabi in that victory team boat. As we look back, and there's Catando. Catando in that yellow machine, as you take a look at Alex Corella. Now, Corella has won here twice, and he used one of those as a springboard for one of his four world titles. Corella was on the fly. Actually, he thought he had won three races in a row because he won the 2015 event only to get disqualified. And uh, they gave the winner to uh, Yosef Arobian, the retired driver from Kuwait. But then Alex Corella won the next two years on a trot. Yeah, you can see there Moran with uh, Corella just behind him. And I'm noticing every lap that Corella does, he seems to be a little bit more settled in that boat, Steve. At the beginning, he was flying a little bit too much and losing time on the circuit. But now it looks a lot more planted on the water, a bit like the way that uh, Chiap is driving the lead boat at the moment. But look at the gap between Chiap and Jonas Anderson. 7.41 seconds. He is running a blinding pace out there at the moment. Stark doesn't seem to be making the progress, Steve. He's still in that ninth position, bunched up with Moran, Carella, the Stark and Contendo just behind him. And they're so, they're so similar in speed that they just are waiting for the boat ahead to try maybe make a mistake before they can pounce and take an opportunity. Yeah, the best battle going on right now is between those midfield positions of uh, Alex Carella along with Eric Stark and Catando as they're almost glued to the hip out there racing around as you look at uh, Thani Al Quincy in that four spot closing the gap now on his teammate Sean Torrente. Torrente in third the last time around these two came by it was 1.77 seconds and as they come whistling through, you can see them both on the screen now. And Thani's getting a little bit closer. Jonathan trying to close up in his world championship teammate. Now, this is where we ch we see the change in Thani's attitude. I mean, he seems to be settling there for, for second position within that team for some time. And uh, we know how capable he is. And the way that he turned on the inside there, you can see Sean Torrenti on the outside. Thani Alquamzi taking a tighter line. The problem is that when you take that tight line, the ball tends to settle a little bit. But he, Steve, he's definitely closing down on that number one boat. He gained 1.1 seconds on Sean Torrente the last time around. It's less than seven tenths of a second. It's less than five boat lengths. And it looks like, oh no, oh my word. Oh, can Philippe you believe Shep, it? Can you believe this? This is five years in a row. Oh, my God. Jonathan, he only got 14 laps in. Oh. What more can you say? And now the battle between the two Team Abu Dhabi boats getting closer and closer. But 
What happened to Philippe Shep? Oh, my. He has pulled off the race course. The monkey continues to sit on his back. Another disappointment for the French world champion. Can you believe that, Steve? Such a blinding performance out there. Nobody could even have a look in with him. He, he, the pace was so fast. I said two laps before that he was like... Seven seconds ahead of Jonas Anderson. But look at this back in here between Sean Torrente and Fanny Alcantara. Fanny has and passed Sean Torrente, the world champion. He's moved up into second spot. Fanny is pulling away from Torrente. Torrente has not run fast times, Jonathan. His best is a 53 6. And we've got a problem on the race course. Oh no, over on the far side. Looks like look, Cedric De Geen, Steve. Looks like De Geen has gone over. As we take a look now, as with 15 laps, wow, what dramatics we've had in the last two laps. As you saw, first of all, that Philippe Shep with more heartbreak and lap 14 pulled over. And now, of course, it looks like unofficially it's uh, Cedric de Guin, the driver from France. So we've lost two French drivers in two laps. And they dropped out. What a shame. But the big question is, what the heck happened to Philippe Shep? His best lap was better than anybody else in this race, a 51-2-9. And he is gone. This for him, as we talked about, what he's done in the last four years, Jonathan, out in the 17th lap, 22nd lap, 17th lap. Well, here we go, 14th lap, and he's gone. Last year, he broke a prop on the fifth lap and got back out and continued the race. But three laps down, he got no points. He finished in 15th position. What a shame for Chiap. And, uh, okay, sorry, what a shame also for Cedric de Guin, the, uh, the other French driver who uh, bit, came a bit of a cropper there um, out on the circuit. But, you know, going back to Chiap, when is his luck going to change? Because his driving is absolutely outstanding. Uh, the control that he had of that boat, the pace that he had out there. He just had the whole race to himself. And then a, yet again, he gets some kind of gremlin just creeping in there and putting him out of the race. Well, we talked about that just before the calamity happened for Philippe Shep. He had over a seven-second lead on Jonas Anderson, and it went bye-bye just as fast as that. Hard to believe what heartbreak that he has gotten. It's, it's, uh, he was in a situation where he thought maybe he had the field covered, as you mentioned. Things were going his way, but interestingly enough, I wonder what was running through the back of his mind as he was out there cruising away up to his seven-second lead. Will it last? Or are we not thinking about these things in the heat of battle? But just bear this in mind. Because of the fact now that uh, Cedric de Guin um, had actually turned the boat over, all of that work that Chap had done, had he still been in the race, would have come to nothing. Because now all of the boats are going to bunch up again together. So you're going to have Jonas Anderson, Torrente, Alquamzi and Stromoy all tightly knit, close together with less than half a second behind them. Now this is where the radio men come into play. Because the race could restart anywhere on this circuit. It doesn't mean because they finish, they pass the start-finish line, it'll automatically start. So the, the radio men are going to be uh, watching the uh, UIM officials as we see uh, Chiap there. Oh, he must be gutted, must he? My goodness gracious me, but you know, what can you do? I mean, you can only do your best. Everybody in that team have worked so well. I was talking to Rudy, one of the mechanics, the chief mechanic there, and he said, you know, we've worked night and day to try and get him home in this race. And if he does come home, we know he's going to do well. But like I said, going back to the radio men now, you know, they're going to play a big part. What do you reckon? Yeah, no, I really think they will. And again, uh, they go over the scenarios. They talk about what they need to do in the paddock before the race itself. What are we going to do if A, B, and C happens? So they discuss this. They think about it. They figure out a strategy. Now, interestingly enough here, Jonathan, we go back a lap before the proceedings of this uh, accident. So everybody gets fair. And guess who moves back into second place? Sean Torrente. So Thani, again, remember, Th it's kind of weird. Thani has had some weird things happen to him in the past. And the crazy thing is, Thani's best lap is only a 54-1, where Sean's is a 53-6. Boy, I'll yeah. tell you. But yet Thani was able to get around Sean, so I'm wondering if there's something going on with Torrente's boats. Well, the only thing I can say is, you know, as the boats, as the boats get into, further into the race, the fuel starts to lighten. They carry an immense amount of fuel on board at the start of the race. They're using this fuel up. 
the big thing is to get a boat that handles with a heavy fuel load and also with a light fuel load. And, you know, I'm only guessing because we don't know what's going on, but maybe as that fuel load gets a bit lighter with Torrente, maybe Tharney's setup is allowing him to push a little bit harder, close the gap on Torrente, and as you said, overtake him. But uh, now it's Thani. I'm sure this has happened before where Thani's done this and done all the hard work and has to go back to the lap before and has lost a, a position there. But Jonas Anderson now, let's start talking about this guy. He's been running really strong all weekend, Steve. And they've got the green flag. And they're underway and they go battle side by side. Team Abu Dhabi boats pushing as it looks like Thani Al Quimsy trying to take the inside on his teammate, Sean Torrente. And as they come by, Torrente now on the inside pushes, but but Thani is right there with him, and he's trying to take second place away from his teammate, Sean Torrente. Team Abu Dhabi, second and third as they come whistling through. Coming down this straight shot, as you can see, Sami Stelio trying to hold off the charge of Peter Morat in this battle for fifth place position. So Torrente back out in that second place position as they take up the charge on Jonas Anderson as they try to close up. And I'll tell you something, this is going to be a hard-fought battle. We're one lap from the halfway point in this race, and we've seen all sorts of dramas in these first 19 laps, Jonathan. Can you believe we're only halfway through this Grand Prix? And you could see the Thani al Kwamzi, the Abu Dhabi driver there, pushing for all he's worth. He almost got inside into the first turn by inside uh, Sean Torrente. Fair play to Sean. He gave him a distance. He didn't close the door on him. Uh, then Thani tried, but scrubbed that boat, scrubbed some of the speed off the boat. Sean was floating the boat on the outside and held on to that second. This battle is intense, Jonathan, as Thani is hoping to leapfrog ahead of Sean Torrente as the two Abu Dhabi teammates who have known each other for many years are right there on the podium. Remember a year ago, Thani finished number two in the race. Sean was third. Right now they flip-flop, but Jonas Anderson is the man they're going to keep hounding on and trying to close up on him as they come through here. As Torrente now looks like he got a little bit more room, a little bit more real estate on his teammate as they slide through that right-hander, which has given people all sorts of grief, including Sean Torrente yesterday and morning practice. Stromoy running well in that fourth slot at the moment. Doesn't seem to be able to close down. There is so little difference between these boats as we go on with Peter Moran. The, uh, the Seoul uh, CTIC China boat is in that sixth slot at the moment just behind Sunny Salio. Great Stromoy is trying to close up. As she fights her way up on Thani El Quimse. Sean Torrente trying to make good his escape. He's built up to a 2.68 difference between he and his teammate, and that's exactly how far back Thani has got the lead over Marit Stromo in that battle for the uh, second place position, or the third place position, and the last spot on the podium. Yeah, you could see Torrente there taking a wide line, trying to change his line to see if he can make up some ground on the leading boat of Jonas Anderson, and... Uh, you know, he's got to try something. The boats are so evenly matched. He's going to start having to move around the circuit, really concentrate now, because it's going to be one thing catching uh, uh, Jonas Anderson. It's certainly going to be another thing actually overtaking him and taking the lead of the Grand Prix. Ray Stromoy sliding by. There's the two-time world champion, Sami Celio, and the white and the red. And there is Peter Moran in his... Uh second year, the driver out of France trying to do his best to stay up. He'd love to have another top five finish. He finished fourth in the championship a year ago. And as they come by here on the front straight, a great shot there. And of course, the Blaze boats are hanging in there. Jonathan Francesco Catanda, who started dead last, has moved up 11 spots. He's in the eighth position and his teammate, the rookie, Greg Foster is in that 10th place position, and Foster started down in the 14th spot. Yeah, Carella caught napping, and we, as we saw earlier on, Cantando was just behind it, but just couldn't seem to make up any ground on him. But on that restart, Cantando was bang on the money, and he stole that place away from uh, Carella, and now he's moving up to start. All right, so here's the battle right now between the Italian Carella in the blue boat and the American rookie Greg Foster who has won the national championship in North America three times. He's no youngster, but he's a great veteran driver, and he's driving a boat that he's still learning a lot about, and he's hanging in there. 
So it's not the first time in the world that Alex Carella over the years has raced against an American. Hey, he raced against, uh, you know, a lot of uh, wonderful drivers in the past, including Jay Price in the championship in 2008. Yeah, and, and the, let me tell you a little bit about Greg Foster this morning in qualifying. I went down there afterwards to have a chat with him because he's a really good guy to talk to. Oh, and he's no. after the race. Is he Steve? Oh, he's slowing down. Did he make a mistake or does he have an engine problem? Greg Foster. No, that's it's Francesco Tando. Tando. Tando, his teammate, who was up in the eighth position way off the race course. Catando is sitting way off the race course trying to gather up. What do you think, Jonathan? Steve, I could see the engine. I, it looks to me like the trim has gone on the engine because the engine, if you look at it on the back of the boat, the angle, it was tucked right under. So either something's given way there on the back of the boat or the actual trim is broken. And that is such a shame because Contando was running really well out there, Steve, wasn't he? And really taking the fight to the rest of the midfield players. We had just talked about it. He had moved up 11 spots. Nobody else has done that today. And Contando, as you mentioned, has gone way, way wide to the outside. It looks like... Uh, if he can uh, solve the problem, that's one thing. But his chances of getting any points today are totally gone here. 24 laps gone, 16 remaining. Now, we, we spoke about Greg Foster, the American driver, running that blaze boat with Cantando. Similar boats, same engine tuner. And um, this morning he was telling me that when he went out in qualifying, the boat was handling so badly. What happened, Steve, was that he hit something out on the water, unbeknown to him. When they craned the boat out of the water, at the bottom of the gear case... There's what we call a skeg. It's like a fin. And that thing had actually bent in half. Of course, back in, when it came to qualifying, then he, he couldn't qualify. He was way, way back. He just couldn't understand it. It's put him on the back foot. And obviously, because these boats are so evenly matched, it's really sort of, he's had to struggle to try and get his way and fight his way back the field, as we see there. Torrente going through, Fanny Alquamzi, still that gap about the same. And again, the gap with the... With, uh, with Fanny and uh, Marit Stormer, pretty much the same again, Steve, you think, about two seconds, so yeah, it's yeah, two, can't seem to see much. 2.3 seconds, okay, Marit has gained about three-tenths of a second on him, but it's staying pretty much paced. About two and a half seconds between Thani and Sean Torrente, also Marit Stromoy, and then Sami Celio, as you can see now, Marit Stromoy pushing. Danielle Quimsey for what it's worth. And now she's here comes Marit Stamoy as she comes up and now side by side as she's going with Danielle Quimsey, the 18-year veteran, and Marit Stromoy who qualified in the second spot is trying her best to steal away and get herself up into that number three spot. Thani Alquamzi was caught napping there, wasn't he, Steve? He took a wide line as we go down on the Geneva side, the open side of the circuit. Marit saw the opportunity. She dived inside him. Unfortunately, the boat just didn't have quite the acceleration because Thani was already accelerating out of the turn, boy. And they got into the next turn, and he just closed down on her, squeezed her on the turn, boy, and he got that position back. Great Strumoy in her 81st start. She has one pole. She's got... Uh... One victory in her career. She's got three podiums. She'd love to finish up on the podium for the fourth time in her career this afternoon. She's going to have to continue to push hard. As it sounded like Celio's boat uh, may have gotten a little bit off song, the engine, so we'll keep an eye on that. Maybe a bit premature, but you and I both perked up, said something's wrong somewhere as they yeah, were we whistling did, by. We, we yeah. both looked at each other and thought, uh oh. Who, who be that? And that boat is Celio's. It looked to me like the trim had gone because the boat was floating all over the place. The engine sounded fine, so uh, we'll have to wait and see in the next lap or so as to what happened there. All right, as we take a look out, we can see that, we see that uh, Alex Corella, Corella now is fighting his way up, and he is uh, trying to move himself up. you got Greg Foster right behind Corella. He continues to hound the Italian as a veteran from California doing his best to get to grips with a brand-new boat and set up, and he continues to try to close up on Alex Corella. Yeah, closing down on him, but you can see there Foster couldn't get the boat settled into the corner. Had to take a wide line because there was too much air in the tunnel. That's the area between the two sponsors and uh, Carella slowly but surely getting used to that boat again. But just doesn't seem to have the pace of those front runners, does he? Twelve laps left to be run here. We're glad you're with us today. Round number three of this UIM Formula One H2O World Championship 2019. And for us, this is the 23rd Grand Prix of France. And Sami Celio... Good ears, my friend. We both perked up. 
like a couple of uh, German <laughs> Shepherds, we went, something's wrong. And sure yeah. enough, what a shame for the two-time world champion, Sami Celio. And for the second straight race this year, Sami Celio will be uh, going away, really, with no more than just uh, one point in his first two races in 2019. It's funny, Steve. We've heard these engines so often over the last 19 years together, haven't we? We seem to know when something's not quite right. You get that sound on the engine as we go back with Carella there now. He's up to seventh. He's made a bit of ground because he's driven well, and he's made ground because a few people have dropped out. But you can see the telemetry on board there on the dash with him, giving him the RPM. Look there, 80... Not a lot of RPM is he running. That's really interesting. I was watching him down the back straight. He was putting about 8,700. These engines should be running at about 93, 9,400. So is he losing a little bit of power as we spotted on the, uh, on the, the, the rev counter that was part of that telemetry system? Just lapping the other French driver, Barrage Robert. And uh, we started with four French pilots in this race. And Robert is still in there, as is Peter Marat. So two French pilots gone, two still remaining. Peter Marat is the highest-placed French driver. They've never been on a podium, Jonathan. They started the French Grand Prix in 1981. They've had a multitude of talented French drivers. Nobody's made the podium. Peter Marat is two spots away from getting up on the podium. Those back markers coming into play now. You can see one of the... Uh Team Charger boats, there is Jonas, and Jonas Anderson going to be able to get a clean pass on him, or is this giving Sean uh, Torrente, the number one boat from Abu Dhabi, the opportunity to close down on the lead boat? Torrente is getting closer, he's less than two seconds now behind Jonas Anderson, 1.96 seconds as you see Marit Stromoy in that four spot, try to pound and continue to Dodger, Thaniel Quimsey, who's up in the third position. Yeah, she slowly but surely again seems to be closing the gap, but it's not quite enough. That one opportunity that she had about four laps ago, where she was squeezed a little bit on the turn, boy, I think was the, probably the one opportunity that uh, she's going to get to get onto that podium today, Steve. Nine laps to go. You can see Jonas Anderson, Sean Torrente on the outside of him. Fanny Alcomsey just behind and married not far behind Fanny now. She's still second there. She's six seconds off the pace from the man who leads this race. So it's starting to accordion in a little bit at a time on the leader, Jonas Anderson. Very interesting. It's down to 1.33 seconds, Jonathan, between first and second place. We've got a heated battle here with nine laps left to go. This is far from being over. This is some exciting stuff. And the momentum, how long will this carry? Jonas Anderson as he fights and claws his way to a, a victory for the first time here in a very long time. I tell you, we've talked about Torrente as being a good driver, but trust me, Jonas Anderson is equally as good a driver as uh, Sean Torrente. There's you see Torrente trying to go on the outside, trying to carry a bit more speed through that corner as Jonas Anderson plows round. Eight laps to go. Now that boat looks beautifully controlled on the water with him, but he only needs to make one mistake, and I can tell you Torrente is going to pounce. Torrente gained three one-hundredths of a second the last time. It's 1.3. Jonas Anderson is... Hasn't won since Abu Dhabi in 2016. That man, we just saw our current world champion, won the last race seven weeks ago in Portimao in Portugal. So Torrente's trying to do his best. He's trying to push the situation here. Cool as a rule for Sean Torrente in 2018. He's trying to do the same in 2019. Two very different drivers, two different boats. Jonas Anderson there designing that boat himself. Sean Torrente on the outside now, Steve, trying to take a different line. He feels that by keeping the power on going through the corner, he may be able to close down on him. He knows that if he just keeps in his wake, he is not going to be able to do anything. All right, as we take a look at our leader, Jonas Anderson, how did he become the leader? He came up and he started in the third place position, got an ace of a start at the beginning of this race, moved up into second place past Marit Stromoy, and then Philippe Shep dropped out of the race, 14 laps in. Jonas Anderson is hanging on for dear life right now, 1.98 seconds between he and Sean Torrente. Yeah, I can tell you something, Steve, that on that last lap, I said that Torrente was trying a different move, trying to go wide, and he he lost about a second by doing that. Um, what, what's happening now is that you can see with uh, Jonas, oh goodness, 
I'm getting nervous here. Did he slow down? Has he got any gremlins? Let's keep our fingers crossed that everything goes well for him until the end of the race. But Jonas is going pin to pin to pin, which means the only way that Torrente is going to be able to get him is on the outside. If he's on the outside, he's obviously got more distance to cover. Back marker coming into play there again, Steve. Is he going to be able to get through? Jonas again perfectly turned there, and uh, I think Torrente lost just a little bit again. He did because he went into turn number five and he had the French driver uh, Albert right there with him as Robert was just setting up for turn number five. Torrente had to kind of quickly maneuver around him and he lost a bit of ground because of that. But overall in that lap, he gained back four tenths of a second, Jonathan. It's 1.6 seconds between he and the leader, Jonas Anderson. Bit of a battle going on now between Carella, three-time world champion, and also um, just ahead of him is uh, Eric Stark, the winner of this race last year. Eric slowly making ground and I think at the moment Carella definitely seems to be in it getting the grip. Let's watch the RPM. You can see it in the top right-hand corner there. 7,000, 8,000. Let's see if it goes up to 9, 9, 2, 9, 3. Once they get to 9,300 RPM, they have what we call a rev limiter, and it stops the engine revving anymore. But I have not seen that boat running at maximum RPM for the last two or three laps. So, uh, you know, how hard is he actually pushing that boat? Or is he running a slightly bigger propeller, which gives him better top speed, but not quite so many RPM on the top end? Jonas Anderson has finished just three races a year ago. His best was here in Avion when he finished second back in... Uh, 2015 here. Last year he started 14th, finished 6th. He's doing a lot better now as we look at long range. Cameron, here we see Stark who has gained uh, four places now in this race. He started 10th. He's up to 6th. He's worked his way past uh, Alex Corella. Corella, who is down in the 7th position. Foster has moved up another spot. Greg Foster has moved up more than anybody else left in this race. He's gained six spots. He's up into the eighth position for the driver out of California. And what a great shot from the helicopter. We have a camera on board the helicopter, and he's following all these boats around, and it gives you a good idea as to the size of the circuit that we're running here. The beautiful uh, uh, city of Evion in the background and the mountains behind there. And is Stark going to make a mistake here? Is We've got to slow-mo the... La Oh, you can see Corella there. He's trying everything he can, Steve, to try and close that gap between him and Stark, who's just a second or so behind him. All right, as we watch the battle for sixth position, less than three laps remaining here in this third round of this championship. As Eric Stark slides down and works his way around, a Robert, the French driver, the difference between first and second, 1.77 seconds. Let's go back to the leaders here. That's Jonas Anderson sliding down into turn number five. Torrente clamoring to close up. He's getting closer and closer. Can he catch him and can he pass him? As this battle goes through the danger zone, and he's hoping to leapfrog and get in front of Jonas Anderson, but Anderson right now is in full flight with less than two laps remaining. And when you saw Anderson going around the last two tight turns, as I said, down on the uh, Geneva side, instead of keeping it nice and tight, what he did was he floated it through the first, through the second. Torrente could not get on the inside of him, and oh my goodness, 74 border Stark, he's had some problems. Stark is in trouble here with less than two laps remaining. He gets the power back on the boat. He continues to run as he has dropped now a spot as Eric Stark has lost that uh, advantage on Alex Corella as we go back to our leader. Jonas Anderson drops a 52-2-4. That's the best lap of the race for him. Torrente with a 52-3-7. It's 1.3 seconds here as we wind down this 40-lap odyssey here in this third round of this championship. Ken Sean Torrente, the world champion, figure out a way to get past Jonas Anderson. He's running out of time. And here on this final lap, Jonathan, Jonas Anderson just hopes he can bring her home for five more turns. Just look how well he's got that boat set up, Steve. It's on rails as it goes round the corners there, pulling about five Gs. When he decelerates, you've got, again, you've got Sean Torrente on the outside taking that wider line. It hasn't worked in the past. I would have thought it might be better for him to just try something a bit different. 
moment and he's doing everything he can to close the gap but as I said earlier it's going to be one thing to over to, to catch Jonas it's going to be another thing to overtake him so we're on the last but one lap Steve anything can happen we've seen it before all right as Jonas Anderson with two more turns to go slides out now through the final corner as Jonas Anderson races to the flag and the dream is for real for Jonas Anderson the winner the 45 year old for Team Abarvati Jonas Anderson picks up the victory his 0 for 14 streak has come to an end and Jonas Anderson wins for him a great great day his sixth career victory in his 95th start and Sean Torrente right behind him continues his streak of podiums here in France with his second place finish he will remain the number one in this championship and he has now finished on the podium four years in a row but today it was all about Jonas Anderson getting aggressive starting from the third spot and charging his way to number one in a victory today and I'll tell you what Steve nobody bar nobody works harder than Jonas Anderson he prepares the boats he builds the boats he does his own engine tuning I mean he does he told me earlier on today he works tirelessly every single day putting these uh, uh, these packages together and for that result I tell you something now nobody deserves it more than Jonas today I think he's done a great job he did not put a foot wrong unfortunately Chiap seemed to have it all his own way for such a long time and then the gremlins came in but a great result for Jonas and for team Am Amaravati wonderful day for him and uh, of course for uh, team Abu Dhabi Jonathan, a very, very interesting thing here as we go on the drone camera around the final lap, the victory lap here this afternoon. There you see Team Abu Dhabi flying in formation once again. Last year, all three of their boats got on the podium. This year, all two boats got on the podium. They didn't win, but Sean Torrente and Thani Al Quimsy finished second and third. And what happened to Eric Stark? Oh, my, he had a problem down in the final corner after setting the fast lap of the race. Eric Stark did a 50.51 and then failed to get everything done. So Eric Stark uh, down in that final quarter had all sorts of trauma. And uh, what a shame for him. But as you can see now, the winner of the race, Jonas Anderson. I'm gets so the nice. accolation of the crowd. Sorry, Jonathan, he's not doing now. The victory donuts here as they spray his teammates. <laughs> and he sprays the crew, letting them oh, know lovely. that this is going to be a very, very special day. As we said, for Jonas Anderson, he stopped a 14-race skid. His last win was in 2016 in Abu Dhabi. And as we said last year, he finished just three races. But today, it all is all about Jonas Anderson getting the job done. So the 44-year-old Swede comes home with the victory, and now has got to be very pleased with the championship. Remember, he was on the podium with a third in Portugal, and he wins today. So he, he and Thani and uh, Sean Torrente are very close. <laughs> he looks so pleased. And what a good investment for Amaravati, the part of uh, India where we're actually moving on to, not in the next race, but the one after that. And uh, they put their faith in uh, Jonas last year. Uh, they're now sponsoring his team. They're the main sponsor there. And, you know, I'm sure that they feel now it was money well spent to be involved with this fairly small knit team with not that many people, but uh, very, very hard workers. And uh, what a great result for Jonas and, and for, for everybody involved with him. Jonas Sanderson, as he gets congratulations, he's well-respected around the community as well as his team. He does everything, Jonathan. He gets his hands dirty. He gets some grimy. He's down there rebuilding engines. For him, this is a 12-month-a-year dream, and for him, that's all he does in life is uh, love to go boat racing and, and build up a momentum, and it's great to see him back in the victory column for the first time in three years. He was telling me this morning, we were having a quiet chat there, and he was saying to me, you know something, John, he said, Oh, and look, thrown in wonderful, the two of them, and Thani al -Kwanzi. He's a star, the Abu Dhabi driver there. Oh, my goodness. He's always up to some different type of antic, you know. And Jonas, I didn't even know he could swim. <laughs> and Sean Torrente, looking him. like he's ready yeah. to join the Olympics, yeah. he decided why not on a very <laughs> hot day here in France. I'll tell you what, the temperature's uh, well up uh, close to 30 degrees and more. And uh, sure, let's go down and uh, go swimming. Keep the cell phone yeah, out of I'll the cool uh, water off. and off you go. <laughs> I'll cool him off, but... Uh, Great result, and he was telling me this morning we were on a quiet chat. Then he said, "You know, I need to spend more time with my family." 
he said, I, it, it's just so intense, the workload in just trying to keep this whole operation. And I wouldn't say he's doing it single-handedly, you know, but uh, most of the work is done with him. And he said he generally puts in a 12-hour day minimum every day, not only when he's here, but when he's at home preparing everything. And, you know, when you see that commitment uh, from a driver like that, who, th th there's no uh, BS with, uh, with him, you know. What he says is uh, he's very calm and collected and, uh, you know, there's, there's, he's, he's a very honest individual and uh, he must be so happy now and, and everybody involved with him. It's, uh, it's a great result. Two races in this series have been completed so far in 2019. Of course, Saudi Arabia got canceled because of weather conditions back in uh, the early spring, but uh, things are starting to shape up a little bit more and more. If you look down on how they finished today, Jonathan, Jonas Anderson, Sean Torrente, Thanio Quimsey, Reed Stromoy, and Peter Moran look like that this could be a five-way battle for this championship all the way to the end in December. So this is far from over, and uh, I'll tell you what, this makes it only more and more exciting. Steve, and I'll go back to what I said at the beginning of the program. This morning, we had a one-hour qualifying session, every lap to count, and what that did, it really did mix things up a little bit at the, at the sharp end, as I call it, you know, the top six. And, and that's what made the difference, and that is what has really made this race come alive this afternoon. You know, I mean, there's been different positions being changed right the way through the race. And uh, see, flying the, uh, the um, Indian flag there, what a great, great result. And uh, like I say, you know, let's hope going forward that uh, the organizers think hard about how the qualifying does go in these events. Um, and look at the difference that it does actually make come the, uh, the Grand Prix itself. Jonas Anderson in his 14th season, as you see his crew members taking the boat around in a celebratory lap. And uh, for him, uh, he had gone a long time before he had won a race. His last win before the one he had in 2016 was in uh, Leo Jo back in 2009. So Jonas Anderson. It's interesting, years ago, Jonathan, back in I think it was about 2008, we had a race in St. Petersburg in Russia, and he came within that close of retiring he ran out of money he had no future he thought this is this is yeah. it i can't go any farther he turned out winning the race and he got all the momentum back and he's continued on that was 10 years ago so uh, a I mean, great thing for for jonas anderson let's go by and take a look at the results here of the event and our 23rd race here in France over the 36 years. Jonas Anderson winning by less than two seconds. Trenti hounding him all the way to the end with teammate Tony Quimsey in third. Reed Stromoy, another top five finish for her. Peter Moran had a steady run in fifth, a great run for the Frenchman, the best French finish. And Alex Corella came up and he finished uh, up in the ninth position. Greg Foster getting his first points of his championship and now leads the rookie points. Chase finishing a fine seventh place. And Bartek Marzouak in the eighth, another top ten for he and uh, uh, Duarte Benevent from Portugal. In the ninth position, Eric Stark. What a shame for him. He lost four spots in that very last corner as he, after he had set the fast lap of the race. Sami Celio, well, he didn't finish along with uh, Francesco Catando. The accident of uh, De Guin, the Frenchman, Philippe Shep, heartbreak, 14 laps in. Bye-bye, see you later, five in a row. The story continues. Ahmed Alhamli went out early, and, uh, of course, uh, Camparado, the rookie, and early got, didn't get it in a full lap, so Alberto Camparado was gone very quickly. Now we take a look at the uh, Drivers' Championships after two rounds. Torrente continues to lead, but it's getting closer. Jonas Anderson closed the gap a bit now, jumps ahead of Thaniel Quimsey. He's three points ahead. Uh, Torrente is of Anderson. Al Quimsey right there in the mix. Reed Stromoy and uh, Peter Morrell all tied up in that uh, fourth spot. And Bartak Marzouak with uh, a nice sixth place uh, position at the moment. Corella picking up points, now has moved up into seventh. Foster now, as we mentioned, leading in the Rookie of the Year points. Uh, he picked up four this afternoon. Camparado, Stark, Benevente. So we have a total of 13 drivers in this championship with points after two rounds. That's saying a lot, Jonathan. It's showing you the competitiveness of this series in 2019. Yeah, and I saw, you know, right at the end, sorry, Steve, onto the uh, team championship. Team Abu Dhabi looking strong. They're 30 points ahead, but Team Amaravati maybe just now finding their wheels and ready to take off here. They're in second place. The Emirates team 
struggling a bit with uh, 24 and uh, the Shenzhen China team. Wow, what can you say about them? They thought they were going to build up a load of points this afternoon. It didn't happen. The victory team with nine. The Atlantic team down in that sixth place position. And we find uh, the final uh, three teams. The Blaze performance team with four, with Greg Foster getting those today after both drivers dropped out in Portugal and Catano going out. The Maverick team with three. And the Shars a team. So every team has picked up at least a point in the first two races. And uh, that's also a good sign. Yeah, you know, but I, I, sorry to interrupt there earlier, but I was saying about uh, the French driver, Philippe Chap, there, you know, right down there with no points, two races, and, uh, yeah, you know, it must be tough for him, you know, he had a, a lot of issues last year, and it goes to show that on his day, you know, when, it, when he's got something solid underneath him, my goodness, can't he show a lot of these uh, other drivers the way, but, you know, that's boat racing in all the time that I competed, there were so many times where you're knocking on the door and then something lets you down, and it's not for want of trying, and, and you know, talk, we talked about the mechanics and everything, how hard that they work, you know, hours and hours um, relentlessly to get the boat to the best that they can for that driver to have a chance of winning, and uh, it's tough, you know, when, when things go wrong like that, but... You know, that's motor racing, isn't it? You know, you never know. It's never over until, uh, I was going to say something, but until it's over. Until the fat lady that's sings. What Is I was that what you're going to say? <laughs> Why not? It's been used can all over the world. Can you say that anymore, Steve? Sure you can. Oh, okay, fine. Sure. Why not? As you see, the boat's continually being craned out. Look at the vantage point here. It's been such a beautiful uh, week. We've had all sorts of crazy weather. And last night, we literally had four thunderstorms roll through from midnight all the way till uh, we came down here very early in the morning to go for practice and then qualifying and we continue on. Let's go back and take a look at the highlights of this race here for this third round of this championship. And as we talked about, this uh, 23rd Grand Prix. And off the start you go, 19 drivers from nine different nations take off. And Philippe Shep getting the great start as they work their way down into a commitment buoy. And they circle along strongly. And right off the bat, Marit Strumoy lost two positions here. as uh, She started uh, in the second spot in qualifying earlier today. But it was uh, Sean Torrente, and then this man, Thaniel Quimsey, almost losing it as he gathered it back up. But Jonas Anderson moved up a spot, Torrente moved up a spot, and then Thaniel Quimsey got around his teammate, but just briefly here, Torrente got a break. And why? Because as the two were battling here on the race circuit, there was a problem on the, the battle that was going on, and of course, uh, you can see how these drivers are flying the boat and almost losing it. And uh, what happened on that lap was that Cedric de Guin crashed out, and that moved Torrente back ahead of Thani Alquimzi from the lap before, and Torrente never relinquished that spot to Thani. No, I mean, I couldn't believe, I bet he couldn't believe his luck when he'd done all that work and uh, taken Torrente fair and square, you know, they went down that back straight together and, and then to have lost that position because they had to go back to the lap before and uh, that was the only chance he had really with Torrente because Torrente did drive a very solid race out there today. Reed Stromoy did her best to get onto the podium. She briefly uh, fought uh, Thani Quimsey side by side, but Quimsey got the... Uh, position back and passed uh, Marie Stromoy and shuffled her off in the fourth spot and that's where she finished for the day. Eric Stark getting loose. Last year's winner trying to move up after he qualified in the 10th position. And there you see, you can see right there Stark on the very last lap. Oh my, Jonathan, what a shame for him as Jonas Anderson and Sean Torrente came across the line. Stark had to be bitterly disappointed. He had one more corner to go and he didn't make it. And he dropped four positions on that very last lap for the driver out of Sweden. I don't know, Steve, what do you think? But uh, that was a pretty good Grand Prix. I thought it was pretty exciting, very, very close racing. Um, and, you know, we just didn't know who was going to win. Uh, and the, the, the positions in the midfield seemed to be changing quite often. So uh, a great race uh, uh, here in Evian. And let's be honest, we've been up against it in Evian for some years. I hope we dearly come back here again because, uh, you know, when the water's right here, it's a great place to race. All right, let's go down and hear from our winner. here, so with uh, Jonas Anderson. Tell you about the race. Yeah, they set up for the start and tried to beat Philip to the first turn, Marit and Philip, and uh, I 
didn't manage to beat Philip. I beat Martin to the start. Then it was just to follow Philip, but he was so fast, and then he broke down, and then it was quite easy race. It's not easy here in Evian because of all the waves, but I tried my best. All right, simple as that. Jonas Anderson trying his best. He got the job done, and I think it was a little bit more difficult than that. He made it sound like, yeah, I did my best. There you go. But uh, <laughs> Jonas Anderson is not always the man for the gift from Gab. He always gets the job done, though, in at home when he's in the workshop, and that's where it pays off. And for Jonas Anderson, all that hard work, he didn't quit. He knew he had an opportunity to battle in this championship if he could just keep the boat and engine alive for a season because he shows streaks of brilliance, but it hasn't been consistent. And consistency will be the word for Jonas Anderson in 2019 if he wants to win a title. Yeah, something he told me this morning. I said, you know, how are you set up for this year? He said, I'll tell you what we've done. Last year, it was all about power on the engines, getting the maximum amount, but it was just too much for the engine. The engines just could not take the strain of that extra horsepower, and we kept braking. This year, he said, we've changed the internals of the engine somewhat. We've now got a little bit more torque, that's the drive, but we've got a less overall horsepower and it has built an element of reliability into the engines which he said i hope is going to take us to my first world championship this year well it paid off for him in spades today and uh, a great day for team amaravati let's go back down on the podium and hear from our world champion sean trente out of miami florida that was a great race sean can you just talk me through it please oh it was awesome we had me and tanya had a great start i got married on the start and then i was chasing jonas and uh in the middle of the race there, before the yellow, he was kind of backing us up. He was just kind of pacing it, and he was holding us up a little bit. But then after the restart, he had speed, and he was, he was able to stay out front. But we were pushing hard enough to hopefully that he made a mistake, but not to make a mistake ourselves because uh, it's about the championship to stay in the lead, and that's what we're doing. And what about your team, uh, team tactics, team strategy? Was it? I mean, Go as fast as we could and try and get as many points as we could. That's it. There's no rules between us. We were fighting just as hard as me and Jonas were fighting. Awesome. There you go. Yeah. Spelled That's out. It. And it was a good question, too. Yeah. You know, is there team strategy here? You know, because you, some people who are doubters about all this thing, you know, the cynics come out and they go, well, you know, Thani Al Quimsy, he's with Team Abu Dhabi. He's from Team Abu Dhabi. He's from the city of Abu Dhabi. He's a local boy. He's in his 18th season. He's never, ever won a championship. He's been uh, in 135 stars. Well, maybe let's give him a chance for uh, the overall championship. And, and Sean spelled it out perfectly just there. Yeah, and, you know, it was the same last year. It went down to the wire. Any of those three drivers could have won the world title last year. As Sean said to us, you know, in his interview after that, uh, after the final event. And it was like whoever could get up there, whoever could win each race, no favoritism whatsoever. And that is the, that I think that is the, uh, is very important in a team like that. And uh, as he said, you know, there's, between the two of them, it was whoever could win, whoever could get the most points. And uh, Thani pushed him all the way and almost made it, didn't he? But in the end, Sean, just to seemed to have the upper hand on him well as we take a look here at the podium as we look off to the west great crowds always that follow this sport here in france as we talked about it's a real tradition it goes back to 1981 in this series but boat racing in france goes all the way back to the start of the uh, 20th century jonathan you know the brits the the french the Americans all very, very strong in powerboat racing. The Italians got in a little bit later. And uh, these four countries are really spelled what really dominates the sport. And uh, Thani Alquimsi, part of the new breed as the, as the countries from uh, the Middle East have gathered and fallen in love with this sport and now there's so much influence with the Middle Eastern countries as well. Yeah, and with Thani, you know, I mean, he was, he was fighting for a long time and then he seemed to lost, lose his way a little bit about, what, five, six, seven years ago and he was never a front runner, let's say. But my goodness, has he not come back in the last two or three years. And, you know, under the, uh, you know, under the control of uh, Guido Capolini there and the rest of the guys, I mean, he really has come into his own and he's driving so well at the moment. Of course, as this guy, Sean Torrente, the American, uh, 
current world champion and uh, a great show by him today and uh, I'm sure he'll be happy. I think he realises winning is important but it's not quite everything to win a world title. Right there you see the Team Abu Dhabi flags and uh, the United Arab Emirates flags waving in formation but they're all waiting for this man who will raise the Swedish flag and of course uh, now that he's represented by India, Team Amaravati is a great sponsor. We'll put the Indian flag up in the number one spot. It'll fly the highest in formation here as Jonas Anderson gets congratulations from all the dignitaries here in Evian who have made such a, a wonderful time here in the five-year venture that we've gone here. And uh, so Jonas Anderson goes to the top step as the winner here this afternoon. And it's very fitting, isn't it? The first time we've seen the Indian flag in Formula One powerboat racing on that top step. And, uh, you know, it, it goes to say we have the Grand Prix there and we see there Jonas's wife. I mean, she puts up with a lot and what a hard worker she is as well. And she must be over the moon. And she also is on the radio. And we were talking about the radio men and how important they were on that restart. Well, she seemed to get it right this afternoon, didn't she, Steve? Yeah, Janie Pearson. And uh, you're right. You watch them clean up and then start shifting all their materials back into the containers. And she's pushing him, going, come on, let's keep going here. You know? I tell you, she's one tough cookie, that woman is. And... Yeah. So Jonas Anderson breaks the Team Abu Dhabi win streak. It comes to an end, and what a great day for this 45-year-old driver from Sweden. Fruvi Sweden as he goes to number one and now is very much caught up in this championship. Jonas Anderson wins the 23rd French Grand Prix here from Evian. For those of us leaving us now, thanks for being with us. For my partner, Jonathan Jones, and all our great international broadcasting crew saying, whether it's good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever in the world you may be at the moment, you've been watching the most exciting racing entertainment on water, the UIM Formula One World Championship. You can follow all the news by going to either Facebook or our official website at F1H2O.com. Until then, on a spectacular, memorable afternoon here on the shores of Lac Le Mans in Evian, France, I'm Steve Michael saying we'll see you coming up next. And keep an eye on the broadcast and the schedule for 2019. Until then, go out and make it a great day. So long, everybody. Wow, wow, wow.